can't see there, guys. Anyways, in this video, we're going to be talking about keys. So, a key is not something you use to unlock a door. Keys in database are something else. A key keeps everything unique, basically. That's, that's the easiest way to remember what a key is. So when you think in a database, it, we kind of structure things in tables. I mean, we don't kind of do that. We do. We do that. We do do that. <laughs> Anyways, if we have a table here, we have the columns, which are the attributes of each thing. So, like, let's make it a user account table because that's always the easiest example. So we got we got user. So that's the title of the table. Now each individual row within this table is going to be a new user. Each column is going to be a thing about the users. So the columns can be username, uh, first name, last name, password, and email. Just for an example. I mean, you can really put whatever you really want in there. Well, a key is something that is going to separate this row from the rest of the rows. So, in this example, think of the things that could be duplicated. Think of all the possible values that you could put within one of these columns and think, is it possible to duplicate it in your application? I mean, yeah, it's possible to duplicate it if you allow it to be duplicated, but what naturally should not be duplicated? So, typically when you sign up for a website or a, a game or something, they'll ask for your email, right? Now, when you sign up, you put your email in, you typically have to go to your email and click like a confirmation or something to register your email so they know that it's a genuine email account. Basically just so they can have your email and they can send you emails and stuff, but yeah. That is an example of what we could use as a key. That's because Every single row within this uh, table should have a separate email. Some websites allow you to use the same email more than once. If that's the case, then this would not be a good key. This kind of key is known as a natural key, because it's naturally already in our, our table. We don't have to define a new column just for the sake of a key. And we'll be getting into more of that in upcoming videos, because doing a whole bunch of videos over keys so you get them like really good. All kind of, like I'm going to go over pretty much everything. But anyways, e if you make it so where only one person can ha use a certain email and that email can only be used by one person, well then that could be used as the key. The way that works is it basically let's say we have the emails 123 at blah 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 a b c blah 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 uh, X, Y, Z, blah, 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 blah. And these are three separate rows. Well, this is going to let us know which person we're talking about. And, like, now if someone has the first same first name and last name by chance, let's say we have two Caleb Currys, Caleb Curry, Caleb Curry, we can't use the name as a key because two people have it, and it's not it's going to confuse us because, okay, do we have two people with the name Caleb Curry or is one person Caleb Curry in the database twice? Is that an error on our part or what? So we can't have the key be in there more than once. So uh, it's never, there's a, um, it's always unique is what I'm looking for. So the key is always unique. You see that? You can see it? You see it? Yeah, I think you can see it. Alright, so what is another example of a key that we could use in this table? Let's get rid of this email. Let's say we're not using the email anymore. And let's say the website allows multiple emails from different people. So like if um, my mom signed up and then I wanted to sign up, I could use my mom's email. So we have two people from the same email. That's an example of some websites that allow you to do that. But I mean, not tons of websites do that, but it is a possibility. It all just depends on what you want to do. It's up to you because, well, I guess it's up to the, if you're making a database for yourself, well, then it's up to you. But if you're making it for someone else, then you get your own, their rules and you follow them. Let's think of some other ones. 
All right, well, email, let's just say it's not email. Password. Well, that's really a bad one because passwords, um, you, they're not necessarily unique because two different accounts can have the same password. And if, if you didn't allow that to where they could have the same password, you'd try to put in a password for your new account and it'd be like, oh, this password is already in use. And then you're like, oh. So then you can try that password on other accounts and try to hack into people. So that would not be a good database design, obviously. So password, that ain't going to work because not every password is unique. First name, last name, eh, it could possibly work, but it's really bad. Maybe first name, last name, and middle initial or middle name. But even that, there's, there's people with the same first name, last name, and middle name. So, eh, and that's first name won't work, last name won't work, and the combination of first name and last name won't work. And yes, keys can be a combination of two columns. We'll be getting into that too. What we have left is username. Well, a username is a generated word that is used to represent your account. It's typically not a name or an email. It's something like... Caleb123 or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So then when people talk to you, they're talking to Caleb123 rather than Caleb Curry. Or they could put the name there, but some websites use usernames, or some games use usernames, or programs use usernames. So you have a username and a password. Well, a username is always unique, because if you have two people with the same username, when you try to sign in, how is the database going to know which one you're trying to sign into. You know, they're, they're, you, they have to be unique. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. That could be used as a key because we could have the username Caleb C, and then we could have dog123, and then pi. These are three different people. All the other stuff, first name, last name, password, email, they point to that key. So we have a first name, and a last name, a password, and an email for the user with the username Caleb C. That's how the key works. We have a first name, a last name, a password, and an email for the person with the, uh, with the user, I'm sorry. We have first name, last name, pass, email for the user with the name dog123. And then we have a first name, last name, password and email for the user with the username pi. That's kind of how the key works. The other thing is that the key should never be changing. So the second thing, never changing. Now why is this? Well that's because when we create keys, we use them to kind of structure our entire database. Everything points towards the key. In the last example we had, I'll just draw a key for a representation. Let's say this is the key and we'll just say it's the username, right? Well, every other column is part, is points back to that key. So we have the, the name of the person. We have the password, and we know that these are pointing to this specific person. If we got rid of this key, and now we have two people with the name Caleb, with the password pi, well now, are we talking about the same person? Are we talking about two separate people, or what? We don't really know, but now if we give it keys, we have a key, let me get, get that key back. So this. Uh, let me see if I can draw a key, right? Probably not. Ugh. Close enough. All right, here's our key. Now we know that this Caleb points to this specific person. We could have it be the username. Or you might often see numbers like 72, the ID, which we'll talk about that too soon. Now if we have a separate key, like this, well then that is a... Uh, a different person. So we could have this guy have the username Caleb is awesome 72. This guy be like uh, sexy chick 74. See what I'm saying? So that's kind of how the keys work. 
we never want them to change because then it's kind of it's confusing because all of these objects are part of this key, basically. This key is used to define uniqueness. Well, if we can change it, it questions the integrity of our database because between tables, we connect things by keys. So let's say this is a user table. This is a comment table. If we have it to where we can change the key, well, then this connection is you're going to have to update this connection all of the time. Now, if we have 50 tables connected to this user table, I'm just going to draw four. Just make it simple. I won't draw all 50. Well, now, when we update this key, this key connection, so we have a comments by a user, we have sales, we have friends, we have messages, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Well, then we change this key. Well, that means every single one of these connections are going to have to update. That uh, requires a lot of work from the server. Make sense? So we don't want them to change because we don't want to have to have that extra work from our database. So that's one thing. Unique, never changing. The other thing, these are just three general rules. There's some other suggestions and stuff, but I'll get into that soon. But the other thing is never null. That means empty va or no value. So when we have a table and we have a key value, let's say we have a user ID. This guy's six, this guy's five, this guy's four, this guy's 38. It doesn't really matter the order. And then we have their name and then whatever, blah, blah, blah. Well, we don't want it to where we can have a blank ID and still have information like Sally. This Sally doesn't have a key. That is another thing we do not want to do with our keys. So here are the three main rules, and we'll get into more in uh, upcoming videos. But a key should always be unique, never be changing, and it should never be empty. You should not allow a row without a key. Yeah, that's about all. So peace out. Check you out in the next, I mean, see you. Peace out. Check out this video. and I don't even know what I was going to say there. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.